everyone, Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, August 11th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. Back in March on our first episode of The Current, we shared details on the Charger Daytona electric muscle car. This week, they released pricing information ahead of the Screaming Banshee deliveries slated for the fourth quarter. The Charger Daytona will initially launch as a two-door and come in two trim levels. The RT trim will start at $59,595 and produce 496 horsepower and 404 pound-feet of torque. It will include standard features like PowerShot, which adds 40 additional horsepower for 15 seconds and is activated through the steering wheel button. It's 12.3-inch Uconnect 5 infotainment screen, which supports wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Amazon Alexa capabilities. Advanced driver assistance features, including active lane management, active blind spot, and rear cross path detection. The RT trim is expected to deliver up to 317 miles of range. The Scat Pack trim will start at $73,190 and produces up to 670 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque with a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of 3.3 seconds. It will also include all the features on the RT in addition to its increased performance and an estimated range of 260 miles. Dodge says both trims will qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit when leased. That may be an indicator that it is powered by a Chinese battery pack. Four-door electric Charger Daytona models, along with the Dodge Charger six-pack high output and standard output gas-powered models are set to begin production early in 2025. I'll link to our original Dodge Charger story in the description if you wanna learn more about this vehicle. What are your thoughts on the Dodge Charger Daytona EV? One of my favorite automotive events, the Pebble Beach Concord de Elegance, is just a week away. This year, Acura has published this photo of a vehicle they'll be showing off on the concept lawn. Last year, Acura brought a concept of the ZDX and the production version is already on vehicle lots. The all-electric SUV Acura is teasing previews a production version to be built on Acura's new platform in their Marysville, Ohio facility where the NSX has been produced. Acura says it will be segment-defying. What do you suppose that means? Let me know in the comments. In April, we reported DC fast charging manufacturer Tritium had filed for bankruptcy. This week, Exacom, India's largest EV charging manufacturer, has announced its acquisition of Tritium for $30 million. With this acquisition, Exacom gains access to Tritium's manufacturing facility in Tennessee and its engineering development center in Brisbane, Australia. There are currently about 13,000 Tritium-built DC fast charging stations operating in 47 countries. Exacom has a workforce of 1,200 people worldwide and serves a customer base in 15 countries, spanning Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Anant Nahata, CEO of Exacom, said, We look forward to working with Tritium's employees, customers, partners, and other stakeholders to grow the business further and provide faster, more reliable charging experiences to EV users across the globe. The acquisition is expected to close by the end of the month pending regulatory approvals. In other EV charging news, ChargePoint has unveiled an Omniport adapter, which allows a single cable to accommodate NACs and CCS vehicles. Users can enter their vehicle's make and model into the ChargePoint app, tap to charge, and allow the charging station to automatically release the appropriate connector. Alternatively, the adapter choice is selectable using the dispenser's touchscreen. This solution is very similar to the Magic Dock technology, which Tesla rolled out in early 2023. ChargePoint plans to roll out the Omniport adapter to newly activated AC and DC charging stations at no additional cost. It can be retrofitted onto ChargePoint CP6000 and Express Plus PowerLink 2000 models at a nominal cost. The company says Omniport enables full support for vehicles with 800 volt architecture, which will ensure max charging speeds for sustained periods of time. The company expects the first Omniport equipped chargers to be available by the end of 2024. They also recently announced that their network includes more than 1 million locations across public, private, and roaming ports in North America and Europe. The world's largest battery manufacturer, China's CATL, has officially entered into the electric vertical takeoff and landing market. 
This week, they announced that they have invested hundreds of millions of dollars into Chinese eVTOL company Autoflight. Autoflight's five-passenger eVTOL aircraft is called Prosperity. It is expected to have a maximum range of 156 miles. Autoflight also confirmed that it holds type certification for the fully autonomous carry-all freighter version of the aircraft with a payload of 970 pounds. The company said the Civil Aviation Administration of China issued the approval on March 22nd, claiming that the carry-all has become the first eVTOL model with a maximum takeoff weight of over one metric ton to achieve type certification. CATL and Autoflight aim to pool their resources and technical expertise to support longer flight distances, higher payload capacities, and improved safety. Autoflight also says through this in-depth collaboration, it will accelerate the development and application of eVTOL battery technology and elevate the overall technical capabilities of eVTOL aircraft categorically. CATL revealed their development of a new battery technology called the condensed battery back in April. They stated that the cells were specifically designed with high energy density for electric flight. In related news, Archer Aviation, a U.S.-based electric vertical takeoff and landing manufacturer, has provided some details on their launch plan for the Los Angeles market. Archer's planned network includes vertiports at key locations such as Los Angeles International Airport, Orange County, Santa Monica, Hollywood, Burbank, Long Beach, and Van Nuys. Archer says they're also coordinating with the Los Angeles Rams and Hollywood Park, the 300-acre district centered around SoFi Stadium, for a potential exclusive vertiport in the area. The company says the goal is for passengers to be able to go to a nearby vertiport or vertical takeoff and landing location and then fly 10 to 20 minutes in Archer's midnight aircraft to their destination of choice within the network, which would save hours versus sitting in traffic. Archer aims to begin its LA network operations by as early as 2026. This comes after the news of their Bay Area network launch plan at the end of June, which outlined a deal with leading real estate developers Kilroy Realty Corporation for a 50-acre waterfront campus in San Francisco that will connect with planned Archer Vertiport locations at Napa, San Jose, Oakland, and Livermore. Archer recently revealed this photo of the construction progress from their nearly 400,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Georgia, which is expected to be completed by the end of this year. Last month, they announced a partnership with another airline working with Southwest to develop operational plans for electric air taxi networks using Archer's eVTOLs at California airports. Do you think there will be an operational eVTOL service as soon as next year or 2026? Would you ride in one? Tesla is now offering their limited edition fully loaded Foundation Series Cybertruck to non-reservation holders in the U.S. and Canada. This version comes at a $20,000 premium to standard pricing. Besides receiving year one delivery, the Foundation Series includes lifetime supervised full self-driving, which has not yet been activated. It also includes lifetime premium connectivity, a mobile connector, PowerShare home backup capability, and a $2,500 Tesla shop credit. Currently, the estimated delivery window for the all-wheel drive Foundation Series is August to September, and the Tri-Motor Cyber Beast is listed as October to December of this year. Months ago, Tesla announced that it would begin producing non-Foundation Series Cybertrucks at standard pricing this quarter. Producer Tim here at the Misco Electric Channel has a Foundation Series Cybertruck. We've driven about 10,000 miles all over the U.S. so far. We also have the PowerShare installed here at the studio. If you have any questions about it, let us know. We'll be answering those questions in an upcoming standalone video. This week, Tesla began offering a new three-year bundle package to new buyers of their Model S and X. The package includes supervised full self-driving, unlimited free supercharging, and premium connectivity at a cost of $5,000. Both of those models have seen sales figures drop recently. Do you think that the move could reverse the trend? If you have found value in this series, we would greatly appreciate it if you considered sharing this video and subscribing to this channel. We will continue producing this series as long as viewership continues to grow. Thank you so much for watching the latest episode of The Current. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.